Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> Everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central. I hope you guys are having a great holidays. I've been enjoying my vacation a lot, shooting lots of GNR videos. And we had a pretty recent interview with guitarist Richard Fortas. He was being interviewed on the Seattle radio station 95KSHE. And he was asked about Guns N' Roses' future plans. And without me transcribing what he said, here is what he said about those future plans. And he talked a bit about what it was like to return to St. Louis after Guns N' Roses hadn't played the city in 26 years. Yeah, it was great. Right on. All right, so Guns N' Roses, not in this lifetime tour, is technically over. It's done. It's done. Three right. years, right. done. Done. <laughs> so so uh, I, I know that on the last show in Honolulu, there was some, some tweeting, I guess, about what's next or... Axel said something about we had to do this before we do the next thing or whatever. You want to yeah. elaborate at all on what the next thing might be? Yeah, we're gonna try and you know hope, try and do another record. Yeah, get, get it out soon. Man, and, I hope uh, it's good. Man, and then I just hope too. it's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> man, how could it not be though? The band's so great right now. I agree. It would be tough not to have a good record with you and Slash and Duff. It's and and Axel, band. and it's just a really, really good band. So, so do you, I mean, I have all these questions in my head, but it, I don't see uh, you guys rushing to do this thing. Am I um, correct? I, th I think it will happen faster than you think. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So maybe we could get... I sure hope it happens faster than yeah, you think. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could we get a new Guns N' Roses song by the end of 2019? It could definitely happen. Wow. So all these definitely maybes. It could definitely happen. Yeah. <laughs> so do you already have stuff, per Maybe. se? Maybe. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Um, might be stuff started. And um, I would think that the recording of said record might happen out in California? I would think so, yeah. Okay. Um, as I'm the only one that doesn't live there now. <laughs> So, um, let's see. I know, uh, what else could I ask you about that that you would give a vague answer to? Um, I, uh, I did not think it's, it's like, it's not, there's nothing really to, I mean, we're hoping to get one out very soon. So, but will Guns N' Roses play any more But dates? Slash, is, Slash is busy. No, we're not going to do any more dates uh, for a little bit. What's a little bit? Uh, I don't know, but it's not going to. Months? Yeah, it's not going to happen. We're not. So it won't be like a full on tour like this thing was. I don't know. We don't. Well, it depends on whether or not we have a new record out. Ah. See? If we have a record, then you go out on tour to support it. And that's what why we want to do it. That's awesome. Get new stuff out there. Wow. I mean, because, you know, I like the Chinese Democracy record. Thank you. I thought it was good. And, uh,. But I can only imagine what a record with those three and you and, and what's the drummer's name? Frank. Frank. It, it would be a really, really good rock record. Yeah, I think game. so too. Hmm. And so so what, what would Axel write about today? I mean, he's not the same guy that he uh, was. I think Axel's but... got a lot to write about. <laughs> well, besides politics, because I know he gets involved with that yeah. a lot. But, you know, I mean, back you know in the day, it was all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's not quite that way anymore. It's him. not? It, Come on now. For, for Hi, Axel. Stephanie. Uh, for, for, well, for, for, for Axel. We're talking about Axel. Yeah, but he's the one that would write the lyrics. Well, that's, so that's right. That's what we're talking about. So, I mean, you know, his life has changed. He he may not write about those has things it? anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How sure are you about this? Well, I don't know. I guess you could tell me if I you could, wanted to. I could, but I'm not going to. All right. All right. <laughs> But no, his life, I don't know how different it is. I mean, he's a different cat for sure. Yeah. You know, he's definitely, uh, I mean, I didn't I didn't know him back then, but, right. but man, he's a solid dude now. So uh, we're talking to Richard Fortas of Pale Divine and Guns N' Roses. So what did you think last year of when uh, the band played at the Dome in St. Louis? Because I was there, and it was a great, great show. Yeah. I, and it was the first I mean, time since the riot. Yeah, well, I mean, what was the whole thing like? I think everyone was a little bit nervous. Um, Were you nervous that something was going to happen, or just, you just just how it would be received? Yeah, I know Axel was. Um, you know, it was just a little tenuous, but it went great. And it I did. thought I thought he handled himself really well, acknowledging it and. <laughs> 
he you know, really didn't do it a lot, but he did say, uh, oh, what did he say? Uh, good to see you again, or... It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. So Saturday Night Live, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, they did a Guns N' Roses and President Trump joke uh, segment on Weekend Update. So this is the photo that they had when they did the joke, and this is the joke they said. So they said, this week Robert Mueller released the teaser trailer for Trump Endgame, joked Colin Jost, referencing the Avengers trailer. He said, federal prosecutors said Friday that Michael Cohen committed two election-related crimes at the direction of a person identified as Individual One. Now, we don't know for sure who Individual One is, but let's just say things are getting tense right now at Individual One Tower. He added, earlier today, Trump called the Mueller report Collusion Illusion, which is also my favorite Guns N' Roses album. And yesterday, Trump tweeted with no context and no explanation. Totally clears the president. Thank you. Sounds like somebody's been reading the secret Jost finished with. So in other news, we had something that uh, somebody had sent me on YouTube, and this was kind of crazy. I don't know how old the song is, but a guy basically wrote a 17 or 20 minute long song that chronicled the entire history of Guns N' Roses. It's basically written on acoustic guitar. I found it pretty amusing. It's called The Ballad of Bill Bailey and the Making of Chinese Democracy and the Unmaking of Axl Rose. So it says it's um, by, I think the album's called Burley Temple, Icarus. And if you guys want to check it out, I've linked to it down below. It's pretty interesting because I never thought anybody would do something like this. So hit the link below and you guys can go check out the song. So in other rock news, Billboard magazine released the top earning rock tours of 2018 and Guns N' Roses did not even make the top eight list. So it's important to note that even though the rock bands on this list made a ton of money, they were outsold by quite a bit compared to some of their pop counterparts. So number one on the rock list was U2, who made about $120 million um, from almost 840,000 ticket sales in total. Rolling Stones were second with about $118 million. Journey and Def Leppard finished tied at $97 million with the Eagles, Foo Fighters, and uh, Dead & Company uh, finishing 4th, 5th, and 6th. Elton John was 7th with about $55 million, and Trans-Siberian Orchestra finished on eight, at the 8th spot with $50.2 million. So how did these guys compare to some of the pop artists? Well, at the top of the overall chart was Ed Sheeran, who made almost a whopping $430 million, and Taylor Swift brought in about $315 million, while Beyonce and Jay-Z collected a cool $254 million. So Ed Sheeran sold about 4.8 million tickets at over 99 shows, while Swift sold 2.6 million at 48 shows. And then Jay-Z and Beyonce sold about 2.2 million tickets over 48 shows. So not only does Sheeran claim the year's biggest tour, Billboard commented the Divide Tour uh, the Divide Tour is 430 million is the biggest year-end total in the history of the Billboard box score dating back to 1990, and he narrowly eclipses the Rolling Stones' 2006 total of 425 million. The report also added that Sheeran's tour was one of the six tracks to gross more than 300 million dollars in one year, following the Stones in 2006, U2 in 2009, and Guns N' Roses in 2017, and Taylor Swift in 2018. So earlier this year, Polestar reported that ticket prices had been soaring in recent times, noting a 14.1 increase in average charge since 2017. They said the precipitous rise speaks to the industry's aggressive pricing strategy to better meet demand and exclude the secondary market, they said. So the aggressive approach appeared to have finally eclipsed the Stones' notoriously pricing policy, which Mick Jagger's band took an average of $157 per ticket, Two artists took more with the Eagles at $162.60 and Elton John with $157.43. So U2's tickets cost an average of $142, but the other top artists charged significantly less. The Foo Fighters only charged $112.71, while Journey and Def Leppard charged about $97, with Dead Company at $81.50 and Trans-Siberian Orchestra at $58.12 a ticket. There was also a new interview with former Guns N' Roses guitarist Bumblefoot. He talked uh, uh, to Talk and Rock with uh, the Meltdown podcast, and he discussed the future music he's working on, including Sons of Apollo. He was asked whether they'd be writing any new material during their 2018 world tour that they were just on. He said, every once in a while, one of us would start playing something rehearsal, and we'd all just start jamming to it. And we'd be like, save that. Save that for the next record. When I was home in between touring every day, I would send them a riff, like, here's what I came up with today, and send them all crazy ideas. A lot of them I'm sure will use. Some of them I'm probably going to end up using on another Bumblefoot solo record. 
He also was asked on whether Sons of Apollo approaches material differently than his uh, solo material he's worked on. He said, I do, but I find one tends to affect the other. Whatever, I, whatever I'm doing affects my solo music. So when I'm playing with guns or doing Arts of Anarchy and now Sons of Apollo, it bleeds into my own stuff a lot. I'm sure the next solo album I do is going to be a lot more progressive and a little heavier because of the influence and just living Sons of Apollo for two years. He was also asked on what fans can expect from the next Sons of Apollo album. He said, I think it will still sound like us. That's not something we can get away from. It will be similar, I'm sure, to the first record, but maybe just end up turning up the intensity knob. I'd like to just get into heavier stuff and the crazier stuff to be crazier and just to really up the intensity, and I can't wait. It's going to be good, and I just really want to make sure we outdo our last record, and the record after this upcoming one outdoes that one, and we just keep raising the bar and demanding more of ourselves and meeting the higher setting that we keep pushing for. In anything, you just always want to become better, and you just want to keep bettering what you've done before and keep growing and improving and keep developing. I'm excited to take this next step and see what we come up with. So that does it for today's news. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Richard's interview and does it change your outlook on what you think will happen in the future for Guns N' Roses. Thanks for watching, guys. Go check out GNRcentral.com and hit subscribe. If you guys love GNR and want to stay up to date on the latest news about the band and love the documentaries I've been doing as well. Take care.